Hey guys, welcome to the Pilot Vulgaire. I am gonna do a quick tutorial today about the autopilot for the Twin Otter DHC6 300 that was just released by Aerosoft this week for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So basically I uh, was uh, spending some time on uh, forums and groups on Facebook and all that stuff and uh, I, I came across a lot of people who were complaining basically about the autopilot of the Twin Otter. Let's just agree that the sounds for now are really awful. I mean, it's just unacceptable. But I believe Aerosoft's gonna fix that pretty soon. However, the autopilot, in my opinion, works about as good as it should. So I just decided to uh, maybe run through the uh, different uh, buttons and options of the autopilot with you just so that everybody is on the same page for that and that uh, hopefully everybody will be enjoying this plane just a little more. So uh, let's get in the air and I'll meet you there. All right, guys, welcome back. Here we are airborne at around 5,000 feet. I am flying manually right now and um, I am basically trimmed or so, so that we can talk about this infamous autopilot. So there are basically uh, two different modules that are uh, redundancies. We have the uh, Collins uh, 913K that's right here with uh, some extra for uh, altitude set. And there's also the Bendix King uh, KAP140 that's right here, which is not standard in the uh, DHC6 uh, 3000, uh, 300, but still, it's there for us to be able to manage the autopilot. So let's first start with the most basic thing which would be to keep our heading so the heading bud it's it's in the hsi right here so i'm gonna move it using the right knob and i'm gonna move it to the to the front of w to exactly in front of where i'm going all right about right here and then i i will engage the heading mode note that it has been highlighted here too and engage autopilot right here. So what that does is it's gonna keep the heading but not interfere with the altitude. So if I trim up, trim down or push my yoke, I can uh, go down or up and it won't interfere with autopilot actions on at that point, okay? You see that light here is flickering? That's always flickering when we are using the trim, either the rudder trim or the uh, elevator trim. So that's how it works. Now, for altitude, we can hit the altitude button or here. And what it does, it, it will just keep the current altitude. Clack. So you see, now we have 4,500 right here. And it's still here because it's a redundancy. And we see the alt indication here and here. So basically right now, the plane won't change the altitude and will not change the heading also. I can, if I want to turn right or left, I can turn right using this wheel here, right? And my plane's going to turn right, just as you would expect from any uh, autopilot on any plane basically change the heading is gonna follow the heading right okay now to change the altitude uh, basically you will set a target altitude either in the Bendix or in the Collins either here or here let's say we do it here so let's input uh, 7000 now that beep you heard is always happening when you are within 1000 feet of the target altitude so if you change the target altitude based on the, the altitude you are right now you will hear that buzz and it's okay it doesn't mean there's something wrong okay so let's try to get to 7000 feet 
when you control an autopilot you always have to indicate how you want to get to that 7000 so you can either choose a flight level change mode or a vertical speed mode if we would like to use the flight level change mode we would use this AIS indicated airspeed button right here however it's the only button right now based on what I can see that's in up so it doesn't work so well if you know how to make it work please feel free to tell me uh, but I feel it doesn't work so what we're gonna do is that we are gonna specify on the Bendix let's get here how we want to get there so we have changed our altitude right here and then we click once again on alt it's gonna switch up to vertical speed and we can use the up button to indicate which vertical speed we want or the down button if you are descending so see now my vertical speed is 700 feet per minute as I uh, requested and now my airspeed is decreasing so I'm gonna put a little more throttle maybe increase my propellers too so that we do not get into trouble so you see now plane is climbing it's pretty good at a steady rate of climb of 7000 feet per minute I can even increase that value if I want 12,000 uh, 1200 feet per minute why not should be able to keep that a little bit more throttle and here we are okay now as you can see on my uh, GNS uh, 530 right here I have a flight plan that was set up in my GPS so I could if I wanted follow that uh, flight plan on the GPS instead of following the actual heading that's input in here so let's do that to do that I have to go of course in the GNS 530 and change the CDI to GPS that's the first thing to do and I can click either on this nav button or this nav button to get up oh, you heard the alert alert means we are 1000 feet below the target altitude of 7000 okay so let's let's try to follow the GPS using that nav button it's gonna be the same let's do it all right navigation and you see nav right here instead of heading heading is not uh, the heading light is not uh, on anymore and the plane is turning towards the uh, the flight plan that's input in my GPS okay that makes sense now 6700 we are almost at our target altitude so let's see if the plane stabilized uh, stabilizes itself it looks like vertical speed is decreasing right now all right 6900 looks good and the speed the airspeed is increasing that's normal because you have to manage your throttle because there's no auto throttle in the twin otter obviously okay so that's for the uh, nav option there is also an approach button right here which is also available in the approach button right here which would be uh, linked to ILS approaches or RNAV approaches I must tell you that I will not cover this in the uh, the introductory tutorial that I'm doing right now because uh, it's it's more it's more regarding landing so it's not related really to uh, like in-flight navigation I just wanted to show you guys how to use the uh, autopilot for a uh, like navigation purposes okay so we won't be covering that and also you can use the uh, vlock uh, here that's linked to uh, inputting VOR frequencies and be able to follow that so basically if you use the vlock and you input a VOR uh, station here the navigation can follow that 
and you can also use the reverse which is the same as the back course right here so that when you input your radial information it's gonna reverse it if you are going from a VOR or to a VOR I am not explaining that in too much detail right now because it's a bit more advanced in a way even though it's super simple uh, it's not really related to autopiloting uh, so I will keep that to myself for now and I might do a uh, VOR a navigation uh, tutorial uh, later okay so basically that's how it works uh, that's so I'm not sure why people are complaining about the autopilot because from my point of view it does exactly what it's supposed to do which means keeping a uh, heading keeping an altitude being able to change the altitude by inputting a uh, vertical speed and a target altitude so basically it works I mean what else can you ask from a uh, an autopilot okay thank you guys for uh, listening to this video if you like it you can uh, subscribe to my uh, pilot guy I know I'm a French speaking guy I'm from Montreal so some uh, some videos I make of full flights might be in French but hey it doesn't mean it's not fun for you to check and uh, well have a good flight everybody see you later bye bye